Joining me right now is U.S. Labor Secretary Eugene Scalia. And, Secretary, it's great to have you this morning. Thanks very much for joining us. It's good to be back with you, Maria. And, and I guess one of the most pressing things is this unemployment benefit relief, which, of course, is going to be going away on July 31, that an additional $600 federal money, which has a lot of people debating whether or not uh, that should continue, given it is uh, paying people more money to stay home than to get back to work. What's your take on, on, on a middle ground in terms of the federal unemployment benefits right now? Well, Maria, I think, as the president noted in that clip, I, the, the first priority is, is simply getting people back to work, uh, sustaining the strong job growth we've seen over the last couple of months, uh, incentivizing business growth and incentivizing hiring, and then also incentivizing the return to work. Uh, with respect to the $600 a week benefit, uh, that was something, uh, you know, extraordinary uh, that was done back in March. It was important when we were closing our economy to provide a substantial benefit. We had workers across the country being told, you just can't go to work. It's not allowed right now. We're in a different place. And if I could just break down that $600 amount itself for a moment, I don't think there was a lot of careful science that went into that specific number. Uh, we, we do know that for nearly 70 percent of the people on unemployment, it's more than they got uh, while they were at work. In the state of Massachusetts, on an annualized basis, you could uh, bring home $75,000 a year right now on unemployment. You know, $600 actually works out, do the math, it's $15 an hour, which has been sort of the Democrats' target minimum wage. But that's not the end of it. You get about an average of another $10 for that hour in state unemployment. So it comes out to about a $25 an hour um, a payment on unemployment. So, I, you know, that, again, it was important to do something substantial uh, as the economy was being closed. But we're in a different place. So I don't see $600 as continuing yeah. or really being the right place to start the discussion. Is there any money that should be uh, from the federal government on unemployment benefits? I mean, are you considering a lower number, like 300 or 200 dollars? Or should the federal government not be doing unemployment benefits? After all, they get them from the state. Well, I think it's appropriate to take a look at um, the unemployment benefit, some federal role. One thing we need to do is simply help states uh, improve their systems. We warned, the administration warned uh, back in March when CARES was being written that the state unemployment system was not a good vehicle for distributing support to individual Americans. We've certainly seen a lot of challenges with it, including fraud on the system. So uh, th that's something that uh, we've been mindful of. I think we need to look at enhancements. And, uh, you know, back in the Great Recession, there was a federal plus up additional federal payment on unemployment. It was twenty five dollars a week. Now, I'm not suggesting that that be mm. the number. Um, but to bound the discussion, I think it's important to keep that in mind that not so long ago when we had another uh, challenging period, that's where we were, which is, again, part of the reason I say I wouldn't start the discussion at $600, although we all recognize that there continue to be a lot of Americans uh, out of work, uh, do need support. We want to uh, bring them back to work. We want to mm. get our schools open, by the way, to help people get back to work. Uh, but we do want to continue to look at ways to support that unemployment insurance system, too. So do, do you expect that they will be able to hammer something out before they leave for the next recess? Because the Senate leaves again August 8th. And, and will the payroll tax cut make it into the final package? Well, I'd like to see that payroll tax cut uh, or uh, some form of holiday or deferral, again, to uh, incentivize people going back to work. Uh, uh, also interested in, in a credit for employers that bring people uh, off of unemployment. I think that's worth being explored. And yes, Maria, uh, I, I think we'll see an agreement reached. It's very important to the president. He's been uh, looking for ways to support American workers from day one. That's the incredible economy that we enjoyed until early March. That's things like mm -hmm. USMCA to bring jobs back. So, yes, I, we'll, we'll find a way to get this done. And I know that's important to the president. Where, where, has been, where has the growth been in terms of industries? I know there are many industries feeling the impact of this pandemic uh, that will be structurally changing. I mean, the travel industry, the restaurant business. 
What do you see in terms of longer term how these industries will look different? And where are you finding growth when we look at every month the jobs numbers? Where are the jobs? Where are the industries that are changing substantially in terms of structural change? Well, uh, you know, uh, in May and June, we added a combined seven and a half million jobs, which was much better than people were projecting, which, by the way, I think is part of the reason that the, the model adopted in the CARES Act, the $600 figure, for example, doesn't uh, make sense now as things are progressing uh, better than had been projected. But in May and June, we saw growth really across industries, Maria. There was really good growth across industries, but we do know that certain industries have been harder hit and, and will feel this longer. And as we uh, consider targeting uh, uh, benefits, support, I, I do think it makes sense to look at particular industries that may have a longer road to come back. You, you mentioned some of them. Um, we, we know that uh, the restaurants will probably in the next few months uh, still have challenges. But by the way, we also know that uh, those are workers who typically don't uh, earn uh, as much as some other workers, certainly not, uh, you know, 50 to $55,000 a year typically, which is what the UI payments are right now. I, I want to ask you about the thrift fund. But before I turn to China, do you think, given the strength that we saw in May and June, do you think we've seen the worst in terms of unemployment? I do. I do. Uh, we uh, came back so much better than projected. The economy, the American worker have again uh, demonstrated their resilience. I want to emphasize the importance of continued uh, discipline when it comes to distancing. Masks are important. Uh, that's part of how we mm -hmm. uh, bring this economy back. People just have to bear that in mind. I saw, I saw your uh, public service announcement on that uh, uh, last night, by the way, which is, you know, good. I think that that message uh, is important. But I, I, I do think that we'll, we're adding jobs now, I, I think, across the country, even as we are reminded in places like Texas that uh, continued safety precautions are important. Well, thank you for that. Secretary, let me ask you before we go about the thrift fund. Uh, we've talked about this several times, the administration trying to get uh, the managers of, of the thrift fund money not to invest in Chinese companies. Uh, what's the update on that in terms of uh, in terms of pulling back funds from investing into things like the MSCI index, where many of those companies are either sanctioned or uh, are building military equipment for the Chinese military? Well, Maria, um, I'm you know, pleased to say that the uh, managers of that fund did decide not to go forward with that investment. You and I had talked about it a couple months ago. And uh, even at that time, I was in discussions with folks at the White House and uh, the National Security Advisor, uh, Robert O'Brien, National Economic Advisor, uh, Larry Kudlow, uh, expressed their concerns uh, with those investments. I, in turn, relayed those to the thrift board and the president, actually, uh, directed them not to go forward. And they agreed it was not in the interests of those federal retirees who included uh, retired military personnel to uh, be invested in uh, Chinese companies with very uh, questionable disclosure uh, practices. And, and some of them, of course, were firms uh, invested in military technology in, in China. So that, that won't be going forward. Mm, sure. Secretary. Yeah. All right. Well, it's good to know that. Secretary, it's good to see you this morning. Thanks very much. It's a pleasure. Thank you, Maria.